A time lapse is simply a video recorded at a much slower frame rate than it is played back, so you condense a lot of time into a short video. The Nikon Z50 has a feature to record time lapses, and in this video I will show how to set it up and give a few tips for you. So let's get cracking. So you start the time lapse over at the photo shooting menu. You need to go to the bottom of the menu. You can just go one up, and then you go to the bottom, and here you can see time lapse movie it is currently off. If it's gray, just like the HDRs up here, then it's probably because you have some settings that doesn't allow the camera to be in time lapse movie mode. And one uh, reason could be if you have flicked this to video mode, then the camera won't allow you to go into time lapse. So make sure you are in camera mode here. In here, you have a little bar you can move around, and there are a few items here. There are two pages. I will take you through them. If you want to start it, you just put the yellow cursor or bar, whatever we call it, on top of start and press OK, and that will start the recording. Interval, that is the minutes and the seconds between the shots. I will talk a little bit more about that a bit later. Shooting time, that is the hours and the minutes. Here it's 20 minutes that the camera will continue to work and take pictures. Exposure smoothing, that is the camera will try, if you turn this on, to smoothen changes in exposure between shots. I normally have this off because I think it gives a more natural uh, look to the to the video, but uh, try this and, and see how it works for you. Silent photography, that means the camera will use the electronic shutter and not the mechanical one. I normally have this on, but uh, again, personal preference. Frame size and frame rate. If you're a videographer, you know this by heart. It's basically choosing between, up here it's uh, 4K, and down here it's uh, 1080, and then you have different variations of frames per second. I normally post only to Instagram, so my, my requirements in terms of uh, quality are not that high, so I, I normally go with 24 frames per second and 1080, meaning this one. But again, of course, personal preference. And finally, interval priority. That is, if the camera should try and keep the rhythm, if you asked it to take a picture every second, for instance, then if the exposure takes a long time, uh, then the camera can prioritize the uh, to keep the rhythm, so to speak, meaning that it will do everything it can to secure that you, you get and frame every second. If you turn this off, then uh, the camera may deviate from, from the specified interval between the shots, subject to uh, the exposure time. When you shoot a time lapse, the output is a very, very condensed version of your efforts. And let me just illustrate. Let's say you take an image every six seconds, and then that would give 10 images per minute. So if you shoot for 30 minutes, that would give 300 images. And at 24 frames per second, that would be 300 divided by 24 or 12 and a half seconds of finished video. So you really need to be patient here. 30 minutes of work for your camera with these parameters only give 12 seconds finished video. You may have wondered what the blue text down here is all about. And this is simply the length, the calculated length of the final video. If we take the example that I just gave you, we can say we take an image every six seconds. We shoot for 30 minutes. And you may recall that I set down here, I set it to 24 frames per second, like this. And if you now look at the calculation, I calculated 12 and a half seconds. Here it says 12.6. So we seem to agree that uh, this will be uh, roughly a 12 second uh, video with these settings. So how much time should there be between shots? Well, that depends on how fast action you want in the final movie and how quickly your subject moves. If you photograph a flower growing, you may want a very long time between the shots, whereas an ice cube melting probably requires more frequent shots. Notice that in post, you can always increase the speed of the film and get more action. So at the expense of disk space, maybe having too many frames is better than having too few. At the risk of stating the obvious, it is very important that you have a fully charged battery because your camera will need to work maybe for half an hour, a full hour, and take pictures maybe every second in, in that process. And for that, you need to have your battery 
ready to endure such a challenge. And the battery in the Nikon Z50 is one of the weakest, if not the weakest, of the mirrorless cameras uh, Nikon has made. So make sure it's fully charged when you start your time lapse. And on that note, in the playback menu, you have the option to turn image review on. When you're doing time lapses, it will actually present an image for each image the camera takes throughout the time lapse, and that can be very taxing for the battery. So my recommendation is to turn this off, at least while you're doing the time lapse. To keep the camera still during the shoot, I use a tripod. If you haven't got one, find a big rock to put the camera on or some way for the camera to be absolutely still. Also think about yourself. Here I found a good bench while waiting for the time lapse to complete. And I also remembered an extra coat to keep me warm while waiting. What camera settings to use during a shoot is very individual. I've had the best results keeping everything manual, but this may not be your preference and that is fine. The disadvantage of keeping all settings manually controlled is that you may end up with an over or underexposed video, as you can see here where the setting sun leaves so little light at the end of the time lapse that it turns all black. If you're curious about manual settings, you can dip your toe, setting the white balance to a constant value, and you do so by not selecting the first two auto options here in the quick menu. And finally, if you plan to do a long time lapse over say one or two hours, do a shorter test run and make sure everything looks as it should and that the framing is as intended. And with that little tip, this video has reached the end. Hope you found it useful. As always, happy shooting. Take care. Bye-bye.